Twin brothers Colin and Taylor Fitzpatrick had pretty much the freshman seasons you would expect as two-star and zero-star recruits. Last year, I played through both of their first seasons as the more talented Colin got a little bit of time as the backup running back at NIU, but Taylor barely saw the field as a walk-on QB at Space Force Academy. Going into season two, Colin is still slated to be the backup for the senior running back on the team, but has been promised more carries than last year. Taylor, on the other hand, wasn't sniffing the field at Space Force and didn't feel like he was a very good fit there at all. He wound up transferring to Kent State, who was desperate for a backup quarterback with a very depleted roster. The move would allow him to stay in the MAC where he can compete against his brother, as well as potentially competing for a starting job. After both having impressive spring practices, the brothers have clearly established themselves as strong backup options, and they'll be fighting hard to win true starting jobs in a sophomore season that will be filled with surprises. So we're going to start off with Taylor's first practice at Kent State, where he has looked pretty shaky throwing the ball so far. Still yet to throw a completion through five reps, but he is finally going to get a big one over the middle of the field. If Taylor wants to earn a starting job, he's got to show some consistency in practice, and drops like that will not help. And he's stepping up in the pocket here, showing a little bit of scrambling ability, which is nice to see. Taylor's definitely never going to be a speedster, but having some ability to navigate the pocket and step up against pressure is really helpful. So Taylor has an okay practice, but he's still got some work to do to challenge for the starting job. He's going to be holding down his normal post of holding kicks for this first game, as it sadly was not a good way to start the season for the Golden Flashes. On the other hand, Taylor's brother Colin still hasn't earned that starting position. He's hoping to at least get a little bit more playing time at the start of the season, with a chance to prove himself for more. But barring an injury from the starter, the Husky senior running back was a 1,000-yard rusher last year, so even if Colin plays really well this season, he's probably going to have to wait until next year to be an every down back, and it would take making some really special plays in a limited role to change that. The Huskies' first game is against the Wake Forest Demon Deacons, and Colin's first handoff comes not too far into the first quarter. He gets a nice game, but gets absolutely lit up. We see what makes Colin good, and what makes him not the starter yet. But it looks like Coach is going to give him some actual time today. He's got an opportunity as a pass catcher here, and he is open, but quarterback just refusing to throw it to him. It does seem like the Huskies are moving towards alternating carries this season a little bit more, which I think is what's right for Colin at this point in his college career. That and being a pass catcher out of the backfield as he makes a nice move to make a dude miss. Colin's actually like really getting a lot of time right now to the point where I'm starting to wonder if the starter is hurt or something, which would be an excellent opportunity for Colin to earn more playing time. That drop is not ideal though. Colin's been trying to establish himself as a strong pass catcher. But the drops have really been an issue for him so far, and his quarterback trusted him a little bit too much to make a play on that one. It does look like Colin has been pushed into an every down roll this game. He has not left the field a whole lot, and getting a nice little counter call here. That play looked like it was blown up in the backfield, tried to spin out of there. Still though, Colin with 50 yards rushing already on the day, he might be on his way to his first 100 yard performance ever. Unfortunately, this offense has been pretty much useless in the first half. The passing game has not been getting going at all, and Colin might have had a big play there if he didn't run into his blocker. But the Husky defense has been good enough to keep this a game. And nice blocking on the counter this time, but Colin gets hit and fumbles it. Just absolutely killer. In limited action, he has fumbled twice in the last two seasons. That is an excellent way to make your coach keep you on the bench. But Colin looking to make up for it here. Can't quite get that block to the outside and gets laid out again. Colin has shown quickness, but hasn't proved to be super elusive so far. That's something he'll have to continue to develop. And the offense scoring zero points is not an ideal look for him. He's got to show a higher level of value to win the starting job, and it looks like Coach has taken him out. So a great opportunity for Colin not necessarily super cashed in. I'm hoping that Taylor can get some action in this Ohio State game because the Buckeyes are absolutely lighting up the golden flashes. The team does finally get a touchdown. I was hoping my boy would get one series, but sadly he does not. I'm hoping Taylor can turn some heads with a better practice today. And he starts this out on a nice little rollout completion over the middle. These Kent State plays are proven pretty hard to run. A lot of this relies on luck and time. I'm hoping that Taylor can hit for one big touchdown or something, and this might be it. He has a guy over top, but dude isn't quite able to break loose to get into the end zone. But it seems like for every nice play Taylor makes, his trash receivers drop a dime from him. Well, Colin's been getting more carries today. His average hasn't been too impressive. This play is what he needed, though. And I'm hoping we can turn that into a breakaway touchdown by the end of his career. It looks like Colin might be the primary receiver on this play, and he is wide open streaking down the field for his biggest of the day. Absolutely love that call from Coach. And the Huskies are actually keeping this game kind of close against a ranked team in the third quarter. A touchdown on this drive would give him a shot to tie the game, and Colin has tons of space on this option, trying to hit a juke move to get to the first down. But after the burst play, he doesn't see the field the rest of the drive. The Huskies do get three, and that turned out not to be the right call, because Arkansas just goes down and scores a touchdown. But Colin's feeling much happier now that he's getting five to ten carries a game. On the other side, the Golden Flashes are playing an absolutely brutal schedule, but they are shockingly hanging with Clemson 
in the first half. Hold on, man. We might actually have a serious upset on our hands here. Sadly, it looks like Clemson might just pull away in the fourth quarter. So the Tigers take a two-score lead, but it was a better effort than I had expected for sure. All right, I'm going to say it's about time for a top-tier practice from Taylor. Let's start really getting that coach trust up. Since Taylor's been working on his agility a little bit, I might try getting out of the pocket more in this practice. These Kent State receivers tend to take a little bit of a longer time to get open on these slow developing routes and just taking dump offs doesn't do a whole lot to build coach trust unfortunately every time i start getting somewhere we get this blanket coverage when i throw an interception and after interceptions like that i always get desperate and chuck it up this one might actually have a chance though an absolutely insane catch by the receiver can't say that i'm sure that's the type of throw that'll build a whole lot of trust so taylor's gonna stay on the bench for the time being that interception was just really killer next up for colin his boys are taking on the nevada wolf pack and he's getting a big carry early in this game on fourth down a nice block will spring him and he might be loose going to the pylon and this is colin's best play of his career he takes it to the bank on fourth down that was incredibly satisfying after the recent struggles with taylor and slowly but surely the more that colin's playing the more coach trust he's earning he might be taking steps towards winning the starting job at this point it helps that this nevada defense is totally wide open but all of colin's runs have been nice he has the potential to get his first 100 yard rushing performance today over 200 yards total rushing on the day and Colin is loose. He has a shot to take this to the crib if he can flash the speed and he does. Colin Fitzpatrick is going to take it 67 yards for the touchdown. I know we're taking on a crappy defense but this is just so incredibly satisfying. This team has struggled a lot the last two years and this win feels like it could get him back on track. Three touchdowns on the day for Colin. The chance for a few more carries before we get up out of here. You bet I'm going to use every second of this clock to take advantage of this opportunity and don't know what number 71 was doing there. Looks like Colin will just get one more more carry today as he is up over 170 yards colin earns his first ever player of the game honors and if that doesn't give him a shot at the starting job i don't know what will the golden flash is still waiting on that first win i hope this can be it as it looks like taylor is getting in on the action here i'm not sure if the quarterback got hurt or what but this could be a huge break and that jet sweep play turned out pretty nice yep taylor is indeed in the game all right starting out with a crisp throw that the receiver of course drops and taylor has really got to take advantage of this this is the best opportunity he's gotten and he cannot take sacks his third and 19 play call is not going to be a whole lot of help but we might have a receiver deep here taylor is just barely able to get that to where it needs to be i don't know why akron came out in that defense and taylor's hardly practiced running but coach is going to have him do it here he actually has a ton of room and is able to cut it up for a first down not so bad of a start this is way more excitement than taylor had last year but sadly he will take a sack on second down this third down will be critical and the curl might be open no it's gonna be a pick not a good time at all for taylor's first turnover but it looks like he will get the chance to redeem himself coach just trying to get him warmed up with a short throw and with the starting quarterback ready to come back in taylor is back to his spot as a holder and kent state blows an early lead akron's gonna win as taylor sadly squandered his big opportunity man taylor is really gonna have to make some sparks fly in practice but his receivers are not giving him the chance to do that that game may have been a disappointment but the throw taylor made on that third down was far and away the best throw I've seen him make. Those are the plays he needs to start making in practice, but with the scout team receivers, it is just tough. It's very possible that at this point in his career, Taylor is really not all that good of a quarterback. For every nice throw he makes, he throws a stupid interception. And I'm starting to wonder if he'll ever see the field again short of an injury. I really thought it was going to be Taylor's season, but instead, Colin is once again the one who's having the best year. Very interestingly, after his amazing performance last week, Colin has not gotten a single carry against Western Michigan. His first will come with just three minutes left in the fourth quarter and of course he is going to break it off to the right and take it all the way to the end zone for a touchdown that is how you get coach to put you on the field again still pretty weird that colin literally didn't touch the ball until then the huskies are going to kick a field goal to go up by three with one minute left but they take the loss to western michigan and at this point colin's got to be feeling pretty frustrated as well as taylor this week taylor's been practicing a lot better he's been focusing on only making safe throws refusing to turn the ball over and he's slowly starting to inch toward what he needs for this coach trust. Taylor's coach has been saying this for a while, but I think this time he might actually mean it. I'm hoping this depressing losing streak will come to an end against Bowling Green, but it does not look like the Golden Flashes are going to get anywhere close. And despite Bowling Green winning by 31, Taylor didn't so much as get a series. Both brothers are so close to position battles with their coach trust levels, but a terrible fumble from Colin in practice will really hurt his trust. It is like night and day, the amount of space that Colin gets in practice versus the amount of space he gets in games. He is going to be able to pick up a nice little speed upgrade here this one against toledo is going to be tough and 
I feel like the Huskies need it to stay close to bowl contention. As coach is getting Colin involved early with the play calling. This off tackle run from the fullback position has been money for Colin. This one's knotted up at three early on. As coach is trying to use Colin as the third down back, but that did not work out well at all. Looks like he'll probably get a series here to start the second quarter. And he's trying to get to the edge on this play, but forgets that he is in his own end zone and takes a safety. Oh no, bro. That is absolutely killer. That's pretty much as bad as it gets in terms of running back mistakes. And it's definitely cost the Huskies big time in this game. Surprise Collins getting back in the game at all after that. He's getting a target here out of the backfield, trying to hit that back juke, but gets pushed out. The fun thing about trying to earn playing time is that every play you get on the field is exciting. And Northern Illinois might just have a chance to tie this game. This drive will be critical. And sure enough, Northern Illinois has a minute to get into the end zone to tie the game. Colin getting the ball in space, but can't spin a guy out. Colin's really got to work on his moves. Thankfully, Ethan Hampton throws a touchdown pass to tie this one up. But Toledo gets a field goal at the end of regulation. Thought we were about to have a fun overtime thriller on our hands. And Colin's no longer anywhere close to becoming the starter on this team. I'm really hoping Colin can hit some splash plays against Central Michigan. He's trying to make one happen here. He normally does not cut that play outside. Colin's got to make sure he doesn't try to do too much and make the situation worse. And I wanted that pitch so bad. There was nothing but green grass ahead there. Sadly, Colin barely sees the field. And the Huskies take another loss to drop to 1-5. and five. Both the brothers' teams are just doing terrible. And I'm shocked to say it, man. Taylor is on the verge of getting a chance to fight for the starting position. He's practicing real well and is so close with the coach trust. He just needs to make sure that he doesn't make any dumb mistakes in this practice. He's just a couple first downs away. I want to play it safe, but I'm going to make these throws if they're open. And that should get us really close. Just going to make one throw, Taylor. We got the running back out of the backfield. That might just be it. And Taylor Fitzpatrick has earned a position battle for the first time in his career. We will see how fair of a fight this is. First, Taylor's got to watch this game against Army, where his team is fighting to stay in bowl contention. This might just be the time this team finally wins. The boys better not mess this up, man. 28-point lead. Let's go. Low-key, Taylor might actually get in in this game. This is a blowout. All right, let's go. I think the starting quarterback did just put on a pretty good show. My guess is Taylor's mostly going to be just handing the ball off. Look at the absolutely atrocious vision from Preston Taylor. I do want to keep this read option one time. Look at the nasty spin move from Taylor. Are you kidding me? It looks like Coach is actually interested in seeing what Taylor can do with his feet. He did do a lot of getting out of the pocket in practice, but he is by no means fast. I don't think Taylor expected to run the rock hardly at all when he came to Kent State, but he is rumbling for a 15-yard gain against this putrid army defense. See, this is nice because we have a very low risk of accidentally losing coach trust. I love a chance at a touchdown for Taylor, but the running back will get into the end zone there. Taylor's gonna leave this game with a nice, easy 30-plus yard rushing day with a couple of first downs, though. We'll just have to see what this position battle holds. Okay, so here we go. Gotta get to a thousand points here, and this is a really nice start. Some nice yak from that receiver. I think that Taylor has a pretty good shot here. He's continuing to just take those easy reads that he has been taking in practice, and I think that's all he's gonna have to do. These routes are getting wide open for one. And Taylor's confidence is going a beautiful touch pass on the corner route is dropped. This one might come down to the wire. Slant's gonna be open here. Okay, okay, that's a big game. The starting job might just be one completion away, and of course, dude drops it. These Kent State receivers have been selling, but the running back gets it here. All right, four reps left. Cannot choke this away. We got the thing over the middle, but Taylor throws a pick. Thankfully, the coaches don't care as much about picks and position battles. They just want to see dudes huck it around, and that's exactly what Taylor's going to do. This gets caught by Gardner. Let's go. Taylor has won the position battle, and I'm not going to jump over to Colin's side yet. I want to see this play out. And he's going to start this one out by getting something going with the ground game. Taylor's honestly looked pretty quick. It is clear that he has improved his speed drastically from last season and might have a dot dialed up here. Nice toe tap catch on the sideline. Okay, this one is off to a nice start. Taylor hasn't been showing a ton of nerve so far and has the halfback angle wide open over the middle. I'm so ready to see our boy throw his first touchdown pass. Doesn't look like he has anything open here. He's going to try to get out of the pocket and barely gets that off. I'm just deathly afraid of throwing a pick. I don't want to throw all this progress away. And that was a pretty tight window. Taylor's looking good so far, though, and I normally don't like this swing pass, but it's setting up great. Running back might have a chance to get into the end zone, and he is going to do it big time. Taylor's first passing touchdown comes on a screen, but still massive. And right now, he's looking like the right choice for the starting job, making efficient reads all day. I will say, this is an absolutely disgusting play call from Coach on 3rd and 10. The only way for this to work is for a bounce route to come open, and Taylor does a great job of navigating the pocket and making that happen. I actually cannot 
not believe we got 20 yards out of that play call. But Taylor not looking green around the gills, man. Showing great pocket presence early in this game and fitting timing throws into nice windows. He has 100 yards in the first quarter. Who could have seen this coming? Now, to be fair, Buffalo is an absolutely atrocious defense for sure. But I think Taylor might just be his father's son after all. Look at him scrambling, trying to get something off. Oh, no, bro. Taylor got hurt on the play. I am praying he is not knocked out for the game or something. I'm honestly glad to see that quarterback take a sack. I guess our guy must have just gotten the wind knocked out of him. Coach is putting him right back in with a QB blast. Look at the boy putting his head down. This man is 5'9", but trucking people like he's a whole lot bigger. Simply put, this man is just a football player. It has the timing route wide open there for an easy game. The passing yards have slowed down a little bit since that hot start. And it really seems like Coach is serious about using the QB run. The only thing I'm a little worried about is potential injuries for Taylor. As this throw just bounces off his receiver's damn head. Which sucks because that probably would have been a massive game. He'll pick up that first down anyway though. Honestly, Taylor looks like a seasoned vet. This has been absolutely beautiful to see. He gets flushed from the pocket here and still finds a way to pick up some yards with the completion. If Taylor could get that speed up just a tiny bit more, he would be a serious force to be reckoned with. And that was almost a killer pick. Absolutely dodged a bullet with dude dropping that. And the slant up the middle is just too easy. We got robbed of a touchdown pass last time due to the injury. And Taylor taking a whole shot there. Kind of a risky throw and it gets dropped. I like to see the confidence from number seven though. He is not playing shy after his interception in an earlier game. We can't make anything happen there. And I feel like we need a touchdown here. Tom taking down in the third quarter. That out route might just be open, but absolutely atrocious throw from Taylor. Hopefully that 100 yard first quarter wasn't a flash in the pan because Taylor's team really needs him to come through here. And I love the four verts here. We'll take a shot to Gardner. Taylor continuing to throw into these close spaces. The man is probably going to throw an interception eventually. And we'll just have to see if those throws work against tougher defenses. This is a huge third down. Not so sure how I feel about the play call. And no time for those routes to develop at all. Taylor's played a clean game, but this offense needs a kick in the rear right now. Receivers dropping passes. Come on. Thankfully, this Buffalo offense has proven to be absolute garbage. I'm loving this read option game right now. Give me that first down. All it takes is one touchdown to potentially put this game away. And another just incredibly risky throw from Taylor. We got to throw that away next time. Letting it ride has pretty much worked out so far. I'm throwing an interception on this drive before we take a field goal. The receiver drops getting worse and worse. And I'm 100% hurrying up to go for it if we don't get this third and 10. The timing just not there with the running back. All right, play the game right here. Can Taylor make a big throw? He can, but what a play from that cornerback. It's a blessing that in Taylor's first game, the offense he's taken on is absolute doo-doo. He's just getting gifted chances to put the game away again and again. And this time he throws a pick, was trying to get it over that guy, but did not have the touch for it. Taylor's game passing has definitely gone downhill since the start, and the receivers have been a big part of it. Buffalo's not going to keep having three and outs forever. I know this. And coach makes the stupid play call of a halfback screen. You know what? Maybe it's not so stupid. I'll shut my mouth. Coach knows what he's doing. I just keep finding myself wishing Taylor could hot route here. Coach doesn't have that trust in him yet, but he makes a huge throw anyway. This will get the golden flashes well into field goal range for sure. But one thing Taylor hasn't been able to do is finish off a drive. We'll see if he can finish off this one, and that is going to pick up the first down barely. The halfback draw gets it in, and Taylor will get to kneel out his first victory. So by no means a perfect game, but from what I saw, definitely enough for Taylor to keep the starting job. Next up, Collins taking on Ball State. Getting an early handoff here and doing a nice job of picking up the first down. I believe this is going to be the last game before the brothers midseason conference matchup. So we'll see if Colin can build up some momentum. I was hoping he'd be able to win the starting job by that game, but he's at least been able to get more playing time. Which has given him a solid amount of touches today. His offense has really been struggling. And I just saw on the injury report the starting halfback is out for a week. That is hilarious timing because it means that Colin is most likely getting the start against his brother next week. So that matchup is going to be exciting and there's a total defense bust here. Colin is behind everybody and he's going to catch the pass with no one around him. His team desperately needed a score and Colin provides it with a 50-yard touchdown catch. Good things happen when you give Colin the ball and he's got a ton of room here. We'll see if he can make a big play as he gets around the corner, fighting his way into the red zone. Colin has clearly really improved his speed this season. He's been able to do a much better job taking advantage of space. And he's got space again here, hitting a clean spin move to pick up the first down. These are moves he was not making at the start of the season. And after a slow start from this offense, Colin Colin has sparked some serious life. His line has honestly done a great job of giving him room to work, and he's been able to pick up big games. This is looking like another breakout game for him, and after this next game where he gets to start, I think that he might get a chance to earn the starting job for real, and he has a ton of space once again here. This looks like another breakaway play, and Colin really 
literally flashing the speed. Turning on the Jets for the best play of his career, a 70-yard touchdown run. And just followed the blockers to perfection there. Colin is averaging an incredible 15 yards per carry against solid conference competition. I'm trying to see a couple more big plays before we get out of here. Another good hold of the right side if only that guy didn't get off his block. This game went from slugfest to blowout really quick. And even on that play where Colin had nothing, he makes a little bit of space. I'm not satisfied yet with this performance, though. I want another touchdown run. But damn, man, it looks like Coach is taking Colin out. I would think he'd want to give him more of a chance to run around. But a great game either way. Colin ends up with over 200 all-purpose yards on the day. As I was wrong, we actually do have one more game before we get to the brother-on-brother -brother matchup. And this is big time, man. Colin gets a plus four speed upgrade to hop up to 97 speed and 80 overall. And we are starting to get really close to the starting job with the Coach Trust after that last performance. I was hoping the starting running back would be hurt again for this week. But it looks like he has, of course, made a quicker return than expected. I would be shocked if Colin didn't get a lot of handoffs today, though. And he's getting one here. The blockers just set up beautifully. And how can you not put this man on the field? He is clearly the most talented player on this offense. And this game could not have gotten off to a better start. Colin has earned enough coach trust to battle for the starting job. We're going to see that position battle here in a second. But first, Colin getting another handoff. And I thought he was about to crib that. Two straight touchdowns would have been absolutely crazy. I've honestly been surprised with how good the blocking has been once we've gotten into games. The starting O-line is just way better than what Collins had to work with in practice, where he's had to fight for every yard. And I love this stretch play. Hopefully the blocker set up right, but right when I talk about the O-line, man. We're gonna go ahead and run this again, and once ahead, we get that instant penetration. So that'll bring Collins' average on the day down to uh, 10 yards per carry, which I'm still pretty okay with. This game against App State has honestly been going pretty nicely so far. If we keep playing like this, this NIU team might have a shot at a bull. Well, Collins didn't start this game, he's definitely been getting the lion's share of the handoffs, and had a great hole there if he didn't stumble. Dang it. One thing that we gotta make sure of for the rest of this game is that we don't let Collins coach trust go back down. I have never seen a coach make a player fight this hard to get on the field. As Collins trying to get to the edge there, but I'm surprised we couldn't outspeed that outside guy. And you see what I'm saying, man? Every time there's a tackle for a loss, coach just loses trust. And App State actually went ahead and took the lead. Gotta make sure we dial in here, and Collins bouncing this way to the outside went the opposite way this play was designed and making some space for himself. Collins done a great job of finding holes today, but I want to continue to see more of those juke and spin moves developing. I think that if Colin can improve those skill moves, it'll really take his game to the next level. And he catches a clutch touchdown pass on fourth and goal, which is huge because this game has been tight. I'm feeling like Colin's due for another big play here, man. Send a dude in motion and Colin once again has a ton of space. Just got to get to the edge. One man to beat and he can't quite do it. My guess is in a couple years of development, Colin is turning that play into a touchdown. And that might have been another big gain if his blocker wasn't so damn slow. Colin up over 100 yards rushing for the second straight game. I'm looking to make that a 200 yard game and that juke move was absolutely ridiculous literally juked out half of the app state defense and this is where colin turns on the jet last week he had a 70 yard touchdown this one is 75 this man might be the next big thing in college football now he just needs one yard to go up over 200 on the day and there it is nice and easy and i don't know why we should stop at 200 man let's have us a 300 yard day colin putting his head down there and i don't know how he gets through these holes sometimes i think that colin's small size makes it easier for him to slip by tacklers Hear that with his great vision and he has so much potential we could have the next devin Callier on our hands here and this one is just too easy man look at how perfectly those blockers set up we will take that in for a nice easy one and colin continues to carry this team on his back at this point app state knows the huskies are going to run it and there is just nothing they can do not only has this o-line been dominant the receivers are blocking well and colin will tightrope down the sidelines to take another one to the house this will put him up over 300 yards on the day you gotta be kidding me, man. I think it's safe to say that Colin has 1000% won himself the starting job next week. And now that we are getting into it, I absolutely love this pistol running scheme for Northern Illinois. As Colin juice a guy and trucks a guy there, we definitely have not seen the power elements of his game so far. But he's shown today that he can be a well-rounded back. Running for five touchdowns here as he is visibly tired, but will still power down to the one yard line. And there's no way coach can't give him the touchdown now. He will march in for his fifth and he wants coach to keep feeding him after that one. It's crazy how a player's career can go from 0 to 100 so fast. Colin was just fighting to get on the field a couple weeks ago, and now he is the literal star of this team. If he had a little bit more time, he could potentially get to 400 yards on the day, which would have to be some kind of Northern Illinois rushing record. Look at him stiff-arming his way trying to get into the end zone. And we just gotta give him a fifth here. He is so tired. But the blocking sets up again, and he will stumble into the end zone. An absolutely unbelievable, legendary performance. As Colin leads his team to a big time upset victory.
three. A better game than I possibly could have imagined him having. Seven total touchdowns. So I think that's a pretty good lead up to the brother on brother matchup. Stay tuned for that. Be sure to drop a like and comment on the video. Have a good one. Peace.